if you're anything like me, you're getting ready to write a paper of some sort for this semester. I love writing outlines. Um, actually, let me put that differently. I hate writing outlines, but I do find that writing the paper is so much easier when I write a good outline. I have tried all sorts of ways to do this. I've used Word documents, just writing in the outline format. I've used uh, Tinderbox, which I actually have another video on how you could use Tinderbox. Um, but most recently, I started using Notion, um, particularly Notion's gallery view. So today I wanted to show you how I've been using it. So here is my Notion setup. If you don't know anything about Notion, you should really kind of get a feel for what Notion is. First, I'll put a link to a couple good videos explaining how to use Notion. Um, I'm just going to focus on how I use it for writing research papers. So I'll be using terms like property and gallery view. And if you don't know what those things are, you need to go check that out first. Anyway, here is my research development template. I will make this available if you want to. Um, I think I can put a link down below so that you can duplicate it into your own Notion account. So starting off, I've got um, four sections here. I've got a database of outlines, a database for sections, a database for notes, and a database for sources. And then I have made a research dashboard. I've tried to keep things very simple and streamlined. So you might end up wanting to add a few flary things here and there and make it more suitable to the way your brain thinks. So feel free to do that. I've just kept it really simple. Just a quick heads up though, this is something I drive into people's heads. Get a citation manager. Everyone needs a citation manager. Unless you're doing a paper that has only three sources, you really need to get a citation manager. Google citation managers, these are some of the, I've listed some of the ones that are most often used. Anyway, get a citation manager. So how I like to write papers, as I mentioned before, I love, what I love to do is read a, read a document, read a book, and take notes on note cards and move them around as I'm writing. I can't do that now that I like to have everything digital. So what I've done is use the gallery view. You'll notice on my research dashboard, once it loads, is um, I've got my active outline. These are the ones for active for the current semester. Um, and actually this is, I still have it filtered for last semester because I haven't started an outline for this semester yet. So this was my um, final paper for last semester. You'll notice I already have it as complete. But you'll notice as you have a gallery view card, you can actually see what is inside it while you're just looking at it, right? So um, one thing that you'll want to keep in mind then is um, the size of the, the card that you want. Um, right now, this is just kind of reference. So I don't really necessarily need it so big. I could make it smaller. Um, because that's, I'm not really using that for much other than just reference to remind myself what the paper is about. Um, but that's why I'm calling these, these cards. Now I've got a section on your outline sources. Um, you'll notice I've got a column here for processed. So once you've read through something, you can, you know, indicate that you're done. You've taken notes on it. You can move on. Um, the way I like to set up my sources is I don't like to be have a lot of properties. So instead of doing the title, the author, the date, the all of the for different properties, so then you're clicking through and filling it out. I just have um, the author and date, which goes along with what I would actually put in my paper, so that I already know what my um, citation inside the paper would be, author date, and then I just include the the citation. This this helps me make sure that I know that um, which paper I'm actually working on. And instead of doing the different properties, I just copy and paste the full citation from my project manager and just paste it in there. It's just so much faster. Um, my key phrase, I have this as um, kind of what the author was talking about so that I can kind of start lumping these into, bit, into, into groups. Like these authors were all talking about this and these authors were all talking about this. Um, and then you'll notice that I've got them connected to notes, outlines, and last edited. Um, this is kind of the uh, where everything, the sections part is kind of where everything comes together. Um, I'm actually going to talk about this 
in just a second, but I just kind of wanted you to see again how when you've got this gallery view, you can actually see what is going on inside of um, these sections. Okay, now next I want to take you actually into an outline. So when I was writing my last paper, I actually favorited this outline page um, and not my dashboard just because I was only working on one paper. So I just, I favorited this instead of my full dashboard. Okay, so you'll notice I've got my course here, the status, the semester, I've got some hidden properties here, the notes that are assigned to it, the sections and the sources. I like to hide those because obviously I'm gonna have them shown down below and this just gets busy up here. Um, I've put some general information here about my paper, what my research question is. It's always good to remind yourself what your research question is. It keeps you from working too hard and going off down rabbit trails. Um, my title, which I, I kind of wrote the title halfway through the paper. So you might, you probably won't have a title when you first start. The requirements and the deadlines. This is just general stuff. Um, I didn't put everything in here. I'm trying to keep it. This is not my document manager, so I just put reminders in here. Now for the sections part. Come on. Okay. So when you're writing a paper, or at least when I write a paper, I initially start off with just a general outline. So that, you know, I've got a card set for intro, a card set for the body, and a card set for the, the conclusion. So that way, when I'm starting to take notes, I can just start filing them in those sections, right? And then when I go back and read through that section, I can further divide it and just further divide it into which sections they they go in. Um, that way, um, you know, I am I don't just have basically a stack of cards that I don't know which one I was going to use where. So this is why I like the sections. Um, now sources, this is where I actually do the research. I import my sources and then when I'm reading through them, um, I'm going to go to Cook and Hanjo. This is where I go to read through the um, article. I, um, after I finished, I tend to come back and fill these in, but what the topic of the article is, I have him listed as a data source, so he'll be good for when I do my um, testing of my hypothesis. I like to write in what the author's question was and the author's answer so that I know what that author was writing about so that if I, I, I don't misuse any of their quotes. I like to write how they would answer my research question. So after I've read everything, I'll think, okay, if I was talking to this person, how would they answer my research question? Um, and then I identify the school of thought. Now, if it's a data source, obviously it's not a school of thought. Um, that's why I have it as a data source. I tend to have the school of thought key phrase um, as the same thing. So you'll notice key phrase here. And then I just start taking notes. Um, I'll just do a new note and, okay, I wanna keep track of this. I'll write the note here. I will identify the topics that I want to make sure that I can tell. This is a data source and it's about Syria as opposed to Lebanon, right? Um, this is a roll up to tell me, you know, remind me that I shouldn't take a note and say that the author says this when obviously they wouldn't say that. The source, which is automatically filled in, um, and then the sections. I can choose which sections I want this to be attached to. Um, do I want to mention this in the intro? Do I want to mention this in the potential for harm? Do I want to mention it in the conclusion? This is the point where I can choose those sections so it'll show up in the corresponding section cards. This is super important to me. I at first was starting to dump some in a whole bunch of cards, you know, using multiple cards. And then as I was writing, I would start cutting things down. So, you know, you can be a little liberal here. Um, and then obviously the outline that it is attached to. So you'll notice when you go back to the author card, you could have notes in here that correspond to many different sections. So you could be using the this author throughout your paper. And basically you've just taken all those note cards that you took from that author and shuffled them into the right place. So I always thought that was cool. 
Now, let's say you've gone through all of your sources and you've taken notes on everything and you are ready to sit down and write. This is when I go to um, the section here. And when I click into a section, I can see that I have one note attached to this. <laughs> now, obviously that's not enough to write a paper with. So let me show you uh, my last paper, what I really did. Um, now I cleaned this up for the template. So you'll notice a lot of superfluous things in here that I didn't include in the template. Um, you can just ignore that. Um, anyway, so here were my outline sections. You'll notice that I have five cards for the intro, three cards for the problem, and then I get up to 28 on this one, right? Seven for this one. So I can tell, okay, my hypothesis, I don't need any notes because that's my hypothesis. That's what I write. But, you know, when I was writing, I could be like, um, okay, my problem, I'm a little, I'm, I don't have enough note cards on problem. I went back and found a few more. So I can go into any section and see the cards that I have there. And you'll notice that when I was writing my notes, I would actually use the little check boxes. So as I used something for the paper, I would um, tick it off. Um, that just kind of helped me keep my brain in order. And then I would write a little summary up here of what I was thinking of writing for that paper, of the structure of just that section. And then when I was writing, I pulled my Word document up and just leave it here. I wouldn't have to click in to the card at all. And I could just go from card to card. Now, the great thing is, is, um, so see my, so for this one, my topic was norms. And you'll notice that I had two cards pertaining to norms here. So what you can do in Notion is you can sort, right? You can sort to have the topic by a certain, you know, ascending. And um, what you can be, if you want them to sort in a certain order, all you need to do is make sure that this is in a certain order. So if you have norms ahead of data, and anytime you sort in your card, those cards will sort in that order. Now, let's say you're writing here and you're like, I'm just going to, I don't need to sort. Sorting is going to put them all out of order. Say you're writing, you're like, okay, I actually want to write about that next. So you can just drag, you know, remove the sorting, drag and drop, and all of a sudden you've got the cards in the order that you want them in. So this is why I'm saying it's so helpful. It feels like I'm using actual note cards. Then I just write. I'll click in and tick off that I used um, something. If I didn't use it, a lot of the times, if I didn't tick something off here, I would go up and shift it to a different section so that it would show up again. I'm like, okay, well, I didn't use it here, but I'm going to use it. I might use it in this section now so that it could just keep moving into the different sections as I'm writing. Um, it was super helpful. I never lost track of notes that way. Anyway, so then as I was writing, I just went through each section and just wrote each section. And let me tell you, it was the smoothest writing experience I've ever had. And you'll notice that I had six, it was a 16 page paper. And I spent a lot of time writing these notes and going through the sources and, and looking and seeing, do I have enough note cards on each section? You'll notice I've got 28 here and 21 here. So at one point, these were really off. I had like three here and 28 here. And so I was like, okay, I need to go back and find some sources to balance this out. Um, so it just, this is me being able to spend a lot of time writing my outline, quote unquote, outline. And then by the time I sat down to write, it was so smooth. And so this old suggestion that if you spend a lot of time on your outline, the writing is easier is so true. So anyway, I hope that helps. This is the way I use Notion. I'm happy to answer any questions. Um, I did want to point out really quickly that in the sources part of my template, so this is what I'm going to make um, available for anybody, but in the sources section, I have included a couple sources that might actually help you 
if you don't quite understand what I'm talking about with writing a paper, you just need help writing and knowing how to write a research question, how to find sources, how to take notes. If you need that kind of basic help, um, I would recommend these two things. First off, this is a website um, from the College Info Geek. I followed him all through college. Um, so that's a good website to kind of help you get started in writing a paper. And then this other, this is a book that I bought. Um, you can find it on Amazon. I, I have the electronic copy. It really helps you understand how to write a research paper, especially if you need to write one that's a little bit more involved than like three to five. Let's say you're getting up to the 10 page paper range and you need to make sure you do a literature review. I definitely recommend checking this book out. Anyway, I hope that helps. Check out the notes below and um, well, notes, the links below, and I hope you have a great semester writing those papers.